Como was much as Carlo Fossi remembered it, but something had changed. Milan remained his birthplace, but it was no longer his home. We got along with everything quite well for a few years, but then we realized that we were too much Americans. The Fossies returned to the United States in 1994 and found a new paradise in Southern California. When Carlo and Krista coached in Italy, they spent their summers here along the shores of Lake Arrowhead. This was the ideal setting. Lake Arrowhead is far removed from the distractions of the big city, and the Ice Castle Trading Center possessed magnificent practice facilities. And the mountains and the lake surrounding it provided Carlo with the final ingredient he sought, inspiration. So when the decision was made for Carlo and Krista to return to their adopted homeland, Lake Arrowhead was the perfect choice. There were no named skaters to nurture in the early years in Lake Arrowhead, but Carlo and Krista approached their tutelage of unpolished and unproven skaters with the same passion that had long been a Fosse trademark. He was as joyous at a 13-year-old intermediate lady landing her first double axel at competition in CIA as he was when I did, you know, the triple-triple combination at Worlds that year. It, was, it didn't change. A year ago, something did change. Nicole Bobek returned, and Fosse was once again in the national and international spotlight. When I came back to Carlo, I was kind of in a stage where um, I wasn't really sure on what I wanted to do. And uh, he made me feel so good with, um, with everything I did, even if I wasn't doing much on the ice. He just gave me such joy and he never put me down or tried any reverse psychology things on me. And um, he just was straightforward. And um, I guess you could say he really brought back the love and the skating for me. That rekindled love would become evident at the U.S. Nationals. Bobek had been plagued by injuries and poor training since her national title in 1995. She did not skate well in the short program. Nicole believed her dream of returning to the World Championships was over, but Carlo Fossi wouldn't listen to such talk. I was in my room and I was crying, and the girl came in and said, Now look, you get in gear here, you know? You can still make it. And, you know, this was really strong with me. And, and said, you go out there and you just do it. And she did. Carlo Fossi wielded his magic wand once again, and they received the prize they sought, a return to the World Championships. was once again in the spotlight. He was at the World Championships with one of the leading ladies at his side. He was back in Switzerland, where he fell in love with Krista, and where he guided Peggy Fleming to her first world title. But this time, the story was very different. On March 20th, Carlo Fossi suffered a fatal heart attack. He was rushed to the hospital, where he died at the age of 67. I just went in and talked to him for a second and said, I love you. And he said to me, go and see Nicole, practice. He didn't say it that clearly, but I could understand, go Nicole. And so I said, OK, and that's the last time. I was in the booth, and this face came around the curtain that I did not recognize at all, because I've never as long as I've known this man, I've never seen that face on him before, and that was Dick Button. And he said, have you heard the news? And that's exactly when I knew what had happened. And what I will remember is not that Carlo died. I will never forget Dick's face. Nicole Bobek's face also told the story. Two days after Carlo Fossi's death, she skated her long program. Krista Fossi was at her side, but there was little anyone could do to help her. When I finished my long, it was weird because I didn't want to get off the ice. I wanted to do it again, to try again. And uh, I just fell to my knees and gave a prayer to Carlo and apologized for not skating the best that I could because I wanted to do better. Nicole Bobek was unable to skate her best. She did not become Carlo Fossi's final champion. 
But that mattered little, for Fosse will be remembered not for his champions, but for his passion. I think everybody remembers him best about how much he loved the sport. I can't emphasize that enough. And how enthusiastic he was every time people saw him. And it's just, they will not forget him, that's for sure. Ladies and gentlemen,